Good morning and welcome to this tutorial video from ST Microelectronics. I am Andrea Vitali, Sensor Ecosystem Manager in the Internet of Things Excellence Center in Santa Clara. Today I am going to present the Sensor Tile Development Kit. We will see what are the components of the Sensor Tile and how the Sensor Tile can be used standalone or with host motherboards. We will see what is included in the Sensor Tile Kit and how the parts in the kit can be used or assembled. We will see how the sensor tile can be used out of the box with its companion app ST BMS running on your smartphone. For advanced and technical users, we will present the block diagram and the pinout of the sensor tile. Let me introduce the sensor tile. The sensor tile is a reference design, an evolution tool, and a development platform. The sensor tile is a tiny square-shaped module. It is only 13.5 by 13.5 mm. This module packs a powerful microcontroller, STM32L4, a Bluetooth Low Energy Radio and Network Processor, Blue Energy MS, with its balloon filter and antenna, motion sensors, 3-axis accelerometer and 3-axis gyroscope, environmental sensors, 3-axis magnetometer and the barometer, and a digital microphone. The sensor tile can work standalone. Just connect the power supply and ground pin to a power source, such as a coin cell battery. The sensor tile can also work with a host board. For this purpose, it comes in two flavors, one with a connector on the back and the other without the connector. Not having a connector makes it easier to solder the module on a host board because the back of the board is flat. The sensor tile is part of the sensor tile kit. The sensor tile kit includes two different motherboards that can extend its capabilities the sensor tile cradle board and the sensor tile cradle expansion board. The first motherboard, the sensor tile cradle, is compact and includes additional sensors, in this case the ambient temperature and relative humidity sensor. It also includes the battery management circuits, a micro USB connector together with other connectors and an SD card slot. The SD card enables the local storage of all the data, removing the need to stream them out immediately. You need to solder the sensor tile on this motherboard, connect the battery, close the protective plastic enclosure, and then you can power up the device by pushing the slider towards the USB connector. The second motherboard, the sensor tile cradle expansion, is slightly larger and includes an audio digital to analog converter, an audio jack connector, and Arduino connectors, together with other components such as the USB micro connector. The Arduino connectors enable the expansion of the system. As an example, one can add a Wi-Fi or NFC expansion, a stepper motor control expansion, or any other expansion board with Arduino connectors. You need to plug the sensor tile on this motherboard and then you can power up the device by connecting the USB connector to a USB port or power source. Once you have assembled your sensor tile, you can connect it to your smartphone. You just need to download and install the STBMS app from the iTunes or the Android store. If you want to learn more about the sensor tile, you can find other tutorial videos from ST Microelectronics. As an example, search for the unboxing the sensor tile video on YouTube. Advanced and technical users can keep watching this video to learn more. This is the sensor tile block diagram. The core is the microcontroller STM32L4, a Cortex M4 with a floating point unit. The microcontroller reads the data from the sensors through a 3-wire SPI. The digital microphone needs a dedicated 2-wire bus to transfer the high data rate bitstream to the microcontroller. The bitstream is known as Pulse Density Modulation, or PDM. The PDM is a stream of bits. The typical speed is 1 to 2 megabits per second. The microcontroller has enough computational power to process all the data coming from the sensors and the audio coming from the microphone. Once processing is completed, the microcontroller transfers the data to the network processor, which includes the Bluetooth Low Energy Radio and the Cortex-M0, which is needed to run the radio protocol stack. The sensor tile can be connected to a host system. For this purpose, several pins are available. Digital buses, such as I2C, SPI, UART or USB, are available. They use different pins, therefore they can work simultaneously. An additional digital microphone can be connected to the system to enable beamforming and sound source localization. There is also the option to use the analog to digital converter embedded in the microcontroller. There is a voltage regulator on board. It regulates the primary input voltage to provide the 1.8 volts for the entire system. The regulated voltage is also available on a dedicated pin so that it can be used to power the host system. 
The secondary input voltage powers the input-output pins, so that there is no need for Levin translator when the host system works at a higher voltage. By default, the secondary voltage is the same as the primary voltage. However, one may need to set the secondary voltage to at least 3 volts in order to enable the USB on the go functionality. Now, let's have a look at the pinout of the sensor 10 module. The first group of pins are the power, supply and ground pins. The sensor tile can work standalone, just connect the primary input voltage pin and the ground pin to a power source. By default, the secondary input voltage is internally shorted with the primary voltage. However, one may want to use a different, higher secondary voltage to match the host system voltage or to use the USB on the go functionality. The second group of pins are dedicated to programming and debugging. The third group of pins is dedicated to the UART or USB interfaces. Note that a low power version of the UART is also available to minimize the power consumption while data transfer is active. The fourth group of pins is dedicated to the PDM, Pulse Density Modulation Bitstream used by digital microphones. On the same pins, a 12 bits analog to digital converter is available. The fifth group of pins is dedicated to the I2C and SPI interfaces. As you can see, all interfaces are available on different pins, so that they can work simultaneously. This concludes the sensor tile tutorial. For more information, please visit the dedicated webpage on the ST website, www.st.com slash sensor tile. On the webpage, you will find the schematic and Gerber files, so you can use the sensor tile as a reference design. You will also find the reference software, pre-compiled binaries and the corresponding source code, and the documentation. A good starting point is the quick guide. During this tutorial, we have seen what are the components of the sensor tile and what is included in the sensor tile kit. For advanced and technical users, we have also presented the block diagram and the pinout of the sensor tile. I hope you have seen how small yet complete the sensor tile is. It is a wonderful reference design to jumpstart your projects. It is a very convenient development platform. It is also an evaluation tool that can be used in the lab or in the field to immediately start your data collection campaign. Thank you for watching. Bye.